Coordinator's Handbook by Anna Von Reitz. September 2020. Chapter 4 of 5. State Nationals and American State Citizens. Our forefathers designed a deliberately complex and, counterbalanced, system of government and paid special attention to conflicts of interest. This system of checks and balances was followed at every level and step, from the foundations of our counties to our states to our states of states, and finally, to each segment of the federal government, too. It is well to remember that at the time, there were large inclusive segments of the population built upon relationships with various European countries. We had English colonists, but also French, Protestant and Papist, Dutch, and Spanish in the West. Building a cohesive and defensible whole out of such disparate origins and conflicts of affiliation, culture, and tradition required extraordinary measures. In the end, it was accomplished via the skillful use and just as skillful limitation of jurisdictional authority. Our physically defined counties control the national jurisdiction of the soil, and, taken together, define the embodiment of the combined soil jurisdiction owed to our State of the Union. Notice the small s. When we are talking about soil jurisdiction, we are talking about the state as a nation state. Alabama is a nation state as well as a state of the Union. Each county government is the supreme local authority and so, the county sheriff is the supreme elected peacekeeping official however, in keeping with checks and balances, this supreme authority extends only within the physical borders of the county, and each county has only its own state as an interface with other states and foreign countries. It is cut off from the rest of the world. This becomes important when you realize that if it were otherwise, each county could split off and ally itself with any foreign government it chose, and our country would quickly become a hodgepodge of over 3,000 disparate crazy quilt pieces, all functioning under different laws and warring with each other and using different forms of currency. Without this segregation of the soil jurisdiction, the union would have dissolved even as it was being born. Each such county and the nation-state that the combined counties build, is populated by people, known as American state nationals. Note the small, p, on, people. We have already seen that Americans born within the borders of a state acquire their nationality at birth, and so we become Texans, New Yorkers, Minnesotans, and so on. We remain American state nationals until the age of 21, when we can choose to act as state citizens. The word, citizen, always implies an obligation to serve some level or form of government, and it is no exception here. When we are old enough to accept the responsibility and understand the obligations involved, we become eligible to act as citizens of our State of the Union. What do we mean by, State of the Union? Notice the capital, S. The state is different and set apart from the nation-state formed by the combined soil jurisdictions of the counties. The state level of government exists in the international jurisdiction of the land and sea. It is inhabited by persons, either lawful persons or legal persons. State citizens voluntarily occupy an office of personhood in order to serve the interests of the international jurisdiction of their state of the union. Their lawful persons are known as people, notice the capital, P. The land jurisdiction begins six inches under the surface of the soil and extends to the center of the earth by definition. Land is an international resource, as it and the resources of the subsoil, mineral deposits and subsurface water, cannot observe the strict and known boundaries of the soil surface. Each state's land jurisdiction is forever connected to its soil, but the nation-state of Alabama and the state known as Alabama occupy two distinct and different jurisdictions, one national, one international in nature. So, Alabamans acting as American state nationals are people who populate the soil jurisdiction of Alabama, but when they choose to act in the capacity of state citizens, they operate as people, that is, lawful persons, and control the international land and sea jurisdiction of Alabama. International jurisdiction is the jurisdiction in which Alabama as a whole acts as a physically defined state of the Union and interacts with the other states and with other countries, for example, Denmark. Our forefathers, always anxious to avoid conflicts of interest which might undermine our security, define state citizens to be people having no other allegiance to or affiliation with any foreign state or nation. Thus, you cannot serve your state as a state citizen, and decide international questions for your state of the union, if you have any conflicts of interest. 
Such conflicts of interest may include being licensed by a foreign government, receiving titles and offices from foreign governments, being employed by foreign governments, receiving unearned welfare benefits from foreign governments or other substantial gifts or emoluments from foreign governments. This includes professional licenses, titles, offices, employments, and substantial unearned welfare, substantial gifts, land, gold, etc., or other emoluments conferred by the federal government subcontractors or what we more readily recognize as foreign governments of other countries, Britain, France, etc. It follows that anyone employed by any other level of government, anyone in receipt of professional licenses issued by any other level of government, or having any other such attachment, obligation, or conflict of interest, is limited to acting as an American state national. A state citizen must be free to make decisions impacting their state and its international relations with other states and nations with a clear mind and open conscience, unaffected by mixed loyalties to any other master. Each state of the Union is thus populated by both American state nationals and American state citizens. Both can serve their state, both can vote in public elections for state and county offices, both inherit their nationality from their state, but when it comes to international and interstate questions, the state citizens are the only ones authorized to vote on these matters. By isolating the soil jurisdiction and giving it the supreme power over local law, the founders sought to preserve the security of the people of each nation-state. They forestalled foreign speculation and interference by giving the counties one, one and only one interface to international jurisdiction their own state of the union. By limiting international and interstate decision-making to state citizens, they further ensured that the states would be self-interested and would not succumb to foreign interests seeking to parlay political influence or kickbacks into giveaways of state interests and assets. End of chapter 4. Links to the coordinator's handbook.pdf and video playlist is in the video description box.